Time for the big board this morning. Our team of insiders standing by live for more on this morning's top stories. ESPN broadcaster, Olympic gold medalist Jessica Mendoza back here at the table. Always great to have you, Jessica. Good to be here. We're going to throw many questions at you, so get ready. <laughs> bring it, right. bring it. But first up, we're going to start with Pokemon Go, the new lawsuit. One couple says they've had enough. They're now suing, claiming the app placed Pokestops, or hotspots, near private property without the consent of the owners. ABC News consumer correspondent Becky Worley joining us now. Becky, always great to have you. And come on, this is getting a little annoying for people who look out their front windows and see all these people playing Pokemon Go. Yeah, real world problems. Uh, Pokemon Go, as you mentioned, places pokey stops in all sorts of locations. And David, the problem, they aggregate some of those, making them a really big draw. That's what's rubbing a couple from St. Clair Shores, Michigan, the wrong way. They have the unfortunate luck of living across from a pokey gym. They, a couple thought it was a local park, but no, a pokey gym is a location with at least seven Pokemon stops. The couple says hundreds of people come each day, trampling their flowers, looking in their windows. Wow. It kind of sounds like a horror show. Uh, they allege that they've submitted requests via the website to get the Pokestops removed, but only received generic replies, no action. Uh, so in this lawsuit, they're going after some big names. Niantic, the app developer, Nintendo, and the Pokemon company. They want Pokemon Go to Pokemon One Stop go. in their neighborhood. <laughs> yes. But there have been a lot of complaints all across the country here, Becky. Yeah, uh, we saw a class action lawsuit in New Jersey, trespassing on private property and that one again, Robin. Uh, other examples, Pokemon Go played in inappropriate places, mm. the Holocaust Museum, a cemetery in Alabama. But in this case, what's interesting, they're not just asking the app to stop. Uh, they're looking for monetary gains, and here's why. Silicon Valley companies, they're so fast at building a user base. I mean, Pokemon Go has nearly as many active users as it's, Twitter. I know. But yeah. you know what Silicon Valley companies stink at? Dealing with customer mm -hmm. complaints. Mm -hmm. So we think this will get them moving now yeah. that money's on the table. We have not heard the last of it, my friend. Thank you, Becky. <laughs> now to Olympic gold medalist Gabby Douglas fighting tough criticism on social media. The gymnast coming under fire for, her placing, for not placing her heart, her hand over her heart during the national anthem. Then she was criticized when she didn't join a standing ovation for her teammates. Jessica Mendoza, you are here. You have been an Olympian. You've won a gold medal. You've won a silver medal with a softball team. What do you make of all this? I mean, I'm not surprised at the backlash just because I feel like that's the day and age we live in, where Twitter and social media, and you can find the smallest things. Is it okay? Absolutely mm. not. I mean, you think about competing and everything you go through to win that gold medal, and you have so much pride for your country. But I remember them going through, and this is what I'm surprised about. I remember as an Olympian, 04 and 08, them right. talking about the etiquette of being on the medal stand and kind of grain, ingraining into us how to stand, how to hold the flag in moments when you want to grab it Who after you win. Who had this conversation with you? Who told you how it, to do it? It was within our team. It was oh, our staff. Yeah, and it was, it was, it was always good. repeated. And just yeah. make sure that when you grab the flag, you hold it like this. When you're on the stand, that this is how you stand. And I think that's important, especially for the younger athletes. And you think about it, they're competing. The last thing that's going to be on their mind is the perfect way and the emotions that they're oh, feeling yeah. after competing and you helped break a barrier with major league baseball announcing mm -hmm. it you you felt the wrath of twitter too uh, what would you say to gabby and everyone else listening and just about when you have to deal with that when you read all that I, I think the hardest thing is how no matter how confident you are and you look at gabby douglas and what a kick butt athlete she is it it affects you and you know without even being in her shoes in particular i know that as much as i didn't want to read it's it's hurtful and i think when people say and, and backlash and everything that she's Space. There's no way that those words didn't affect mm. her, especially when she was competing, and that's the part that really upsets yeah, me. Yeah, but you've handled it very well, and you're good at what you do. That's right. You've that's earned right. it. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know, it's good advice for Gabby too. It's, yeah. It does hurt though. So people out there mm -hmm. tweeting, they should be aware of that. All right, now to some big news for pumpkin. <laughs> I mean, pumpkin spice latte. Yeah. All right. Anyway, McDonald's announcing it will start serving its version of the drink on. Get this, August 31st, folks. It appears the fast food giant will beat Starbucks to the punch. Last year, its version of the seasonal beverage was released, I think, September 8th or so. But okay. is it too much, too soon? Let's get right to our business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis. <laughs> it all comes down to business, right, Rebecca? It's it, This is great for business, David. We're talking about it right here. This is going to bring in new customers, and it's sort of similar to the milk in the back of the grocery store. You're going to go in maybe for a PSL, that's the lingo, pumpkin spice latte, and then you might buy something else. That's great for business. Yeah, it is great for business, but we see this with the holidays also. You know how early they put up the decorations and all that, same thing. Yeah. 
It, it, it is. And, and you see the backlash online. And guess what? That works in advantage as well for retailers. We've seen Christmas in July. It was great for mm -hmm, Amazon mm -hmm. when they rolled that out and a number of other retailers. McDonald's is banking on this. They want to beat Starbucks to the punch. People were even upset last year when Starbucks introduced these things on September 8th because they felt like it was too late. All they right. needed their pumpkin spice right, your lattes PSL's here. Oh, yeah. PSL. Okay. I don't PSL. care if it's February, March. Like I, I'm all for it. Are you I, really? Oh yeah. Cheers. Bring on the PSL, the pumpkin pancakes, the, all of it. The Christmas all music it. is coming too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Becky. Sorry. Oh, you. Oh, bad, what are, what are you bad. drinking, Becky? <laughs> no, <laughs> just five <laughs> can, can we? Can we? No. Where, where does, I, where I just bought a case of the pie filling. I just bought a case of the pie filling. I'm cracking one of these and chugging it. Mainlining pumpkin till Thanksgiving. <laughs> Go right to the source. Thank you all very much. And Jessica, cheers. Cheers. It's Thanks bad. for being it's here. Uh, thank you. It's really yeah. good. All right.